Hi, and good evening. My name is David, and tonight I am running, uh, beginning a, uh, a quarterly run of The Between. Um, so uh, The Between is a PBTA game um, of uh, Victorian Monster Hunters by Jason Cordova. It uh, uses some of the same mechanics as uh, Brindlewood Bay uh, by the same author. Um, we'll I'll go into a bit more of a discussion on what the game is uh, in a moment, um, as this is our first session playing it together. So um, we'll we'll I'll touch on all that in a minute. Um, this game tonight is being organized as part of the Gauntlet, which is an online role playing group. We get together, we have a, a calendar where you can sign up to play games online like this one. Um, we also have um, a number of podcasts. We have a monthly gaming magazine um, called uh, Codex. Um, the the game we're playing tonight was was sort of released uh, in place of an, an issue of um, uh, of Codex, uh, so it's sort of part of the uh, the Gauntlet family, as it were. Um, if you want to find out any information on any of all that that stuff I've just said, uh, you can go to gauntlet-rpg.com. Uh, check that out. Hit, read about the podcasts. Uh, read about the the magazine and all that stuff. Um, yeah. I'll also put a link to that down below, as well as a link to where you can find out more about this, this particular game. So, um, yeah, as I said, the the um, uh, the Between um, is a, um, a, P a PBTA game of uh, sort of gothic Victorian mon monster hunters. Um, I'll introduce this game using a little uh, thing called uh, CATS, uh, which stands for Concept, Aim, Tone and Subject Matter. Um, it's just a little way of kind of um, detailing out what the game is and helping me keep roughly on track. Um, I've kind of got, I'll, I'll kind of try and go through this in order, explain myself as we go. Um, if at any point anyone wants to jump in, um, ask questions, clarify something, make a suggestion of something you'd like to do a little bit differently, anything like that, do feel free to do so. Um, uh, just, just, just jump in as and when. Um, so yeah, uh, as I said, between it's a game of uh, of uh, monster hunters in Victorian London. It's by Jason Cordova. Um, it is set around the year eighteen seventy, though we're not bound to a very specific time zone. That's kind of in terms of like our technology, our broad world events. That is the time we're set in. Um, the hunters will be faced with a succession of monstrous, not always, but often supernatural threats, uh, which you will investigate and neutralize. Uh, as, as you work through these, you'll slowly become aware of the machinations of a criminal mastermind um, sort of lurking in the background of, of these various investigations. And all being well, the climax to our series is likely to be confronting uh, this mastermind. Um, the game takes particular inspiration from Penny Dreadful, the uh, TV series, but is, is broadly inspired by a lot of gothic horror themes more broadly. Um, so uh, I mentioned already, but this has a similar core to Brindlewood Bay, um, which uses a system of emergent mystery. So um, in in the in Brindlewood Bay, the, the, the basic premise is you're going around solving murders. You'll always go into a go into a, a new location. The a murder happens. You investigate it. Um, between is similar, but the mysteries in the between are a little bit more open ended. Um, so rather than it always being a murder and you're always looking for the the, the person who did it um, in this, the, you, you will have be presented with a number of different questions to answer um, that will sort of determine the, the flow of the um, investigation and, and how it ends and what you do and so on and so forth. I'll explain all of this more once we actually get into our first uh, our first mystery, our first threat. Um, the, the, as I said, the big thing to, with, with this is that the, the mystery in, in this is emergent, uh, which is to say, um, I will provide, um, clues, um, as you investigate, but it is up to, um, to you all as, as players to decide what those clues mean and how they relate to the, the various questions you have to answer. There is no like canonical answer to the, to the questions that you're presented with. Um, sometimes the, the kind of the culprit that you're after will already be predetermined by the, by the particular threat that you're facing. So you'll know who it is you're going up against, but you, you might have to find out some information about why or, or whatever kind of Columbo style 
um, or sometimes you know the person you're up against might be a mystery and, and you'll be determining who it is but the important thing is it will always be sort of down to you to come up with that answer yourselves and whatever you say is the right answer presuming that the, the mechanic there is to, to sort this out goes in your favor that answer you come up with will be the truth um, so that's just something to be aware of um, uh, as I said there are I do not have have uh, secret uh, secret answers to all the questions hidden by the GM screen um, the other thing is that uh, just just in terms of the, the 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 broad like thematic stuff and this kind of plays a little bit into kind of our, our um, content and safety tools as well that we'll touch on in a moment but um, the characters that you play in the between um, are frequently um, flawed to to greater or lesser extents depending on the individual playbooks um, you, how much you lean into the kind of the the darker sides of the characters is is sort of up to yourselves but it is kind of you know this isn't a game of playing you know um pure heroes um who who do everything for noble goals and so on and so forth um it is a game with a bit more uh, a bit more nuance a bit more um um yeah that's what i was looking for Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and sort of tied in with that as well, part of the part of the concept of, of what you do as Hargrave House, the organization, you're all part of that goes out hunting monsters, um, is that you are ultimately kind of serving the um, general interests um, of the uh, British Empire, protecting Queen Victoria, uh, and so on and so forth. That that the relationship might be a little bit complicated, but ultimately you are assumed to generally be on the side of empire, which obviously has its own um, uh, issues, shall we say. And um, again, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit of that uh, uh, shortly. But yeah, you know, the, 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 this is not a, a game about kind of leading revolutions and being on the side of the common man. This is, you know, the, the, not to say that you will always be upholding, uh, upholding the, um, the will of, of, uh, of the uh, landed aristocracy or anything, but it's definitely something that, is, that, that will be, is, is quite prevalent as it were. So anyway, that's the, that's, you know, in, in, in long terms, that is our, our concept of what this game is about. Uh, so the aim of our game, um, the aim of our game in general, um, from the perspective of the characters, um, is to investigate the threats that face London and take whatever action is required to make the city a slightly safer place, while also potentially pursuing your own agendas as well. Um, one of the things that's important to know is that while you have the tacit backing of the Crown, Hargrave House doesn't really have any official powers. You might sometimes work with the police, um, but also sometimes you won't, you know, you, you, you don't have kind of a, a, a badge that you can flash to make things uh, go away. Um, as players, um, what we're looking to do is, is in, on top of obviously like exploring the threats that, that are faced with us, um, is to also to learn about the histories of the hunters. And there are some specific mechanics around uh, the, the history, as I sort of alluded to earlier. Um, your backstory is not something we will discuss um, at the start of play. Your backstory is something that comes out uh, over time. There are a couple of different mechanics that can allow you to tell uh, relief, release information about your backstory. But if one of those, um, one of those um, mechanics isn't engaged, then th then we should look to be a bit more mysterious about our backgrounds, um, essentially. Um, and also kind of we'll, we'll be looking at London as a wider entity outside, um, outside of the, uh, the, the direct lives of our characters as well. Um, and we'll share responsibility for going into some of that. Again, another mechanic that we'll, we'll touch on when we get there. Uh, so tone, the tone of the between is inspired by its source material, um, gothic, dark, um, I said, you know, um, that's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, conflicted, I suppose, um, but also kind of indulgent and sensuous um, alongside that. Uh, we might get into elements of dark humour or melodrama, um, but by and large, we're looking to kind of create a tone that's quite tense, quite dangerous. Um, the tone of the game, like, in... Um, intentionally um, cycles a little bit. Um, there are essentially two phases or two major phases of play, uh, day and night. Um, day can be a bit more relaxed, a bit more um, 
with a bit more time to breathe and a bit more time to get into characters to learn about each other whereas night is about tension and danger and it's played at a slightly faster pace um it's it's um, more dangerous in general and again that, that is sort of backed up mechanically but again we'll get onto that later um it is a historical game it is set in a real time and a real place um though with more overt monsters than in reality um we I, I'm, I don't want this to concern ourselves too much with historical accuracy. Uh, we're not going to be checking, you know, whether whether a particular sort of hat was was invented in 18, 1870 or whether that came out in 1871. Those sort of details are, are entirely um, uh, outside the scope for what I'm looking for in this game in particular. Um, I do want to try and keep some very similitude. You want to try and keep things on theme as much as possible. Um, but this it doesn't require you know perfect knowledge of either the, the 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 place or the time period if you do have questions that you want answer you want answered about like oh would would you know um would x be around what you know is why a concept feel free to ask it i can't guarantee i'll be able to answer i will try if i can but also you don't need to be second guessing everything you do always feel free to like we, we care more about the drama out of the game first and um any any sort of um yeah adherence to to history as a as a distinct second um the other thing as well is that one of the particular things that i personally am interested in um when it comes to um to, to this is the, the the kind of looking at the alongside obviously the more over supernatural threats of London um, that, that we'll be facing in the game is also the kind of the social horror of life in Victorian Britain, Victorian London in particular. Um, so the, 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 the base assumption of the, um, of, of the game um, is that we do not allow kind of um, period, um, uh, period typical um, views on, on, on gender, sexuality, race, etc., to impinge on the game. Um, I, I'm still, that is still broadly something I want to keep on as I definitely, you know, have no interest in this looking at um, personal um, attacks on, on grounds of, of, um, of those sort of exclusionary things, use of slurs, anything like that is something we want to avoid. There's, you know, the fact we're playing a, um, a historical game does not, not kind of uh, invite those, those things necessarily. However, we what I might lean into a little bit more than is kind of necessarily written into the game itself is some of the more institutional aspects of um, of those those sort of um, divides uh, attitudes towards you know the women in positions of power th things like that. Um, this we, 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 this is still something that's open for discussion when we get onto our um, our discussion on safety tools um, and content. And if people aren't happy with that, that's that's fine. There's just you know I want to make that that upfront that that is kind of that plays into my sort of understanding of the of the time and so on and so forth. Um, and obviously, when it comes to our own characters that we're playing and, and many of the characters that we'll be experiencing uh, that we'll be encountering in the play itself, um, obviously by dint of being player characters in a role-playing game, you are all exceptional. And there were, and always have been exceptional people of, of uh, you know, who've defied societal um, uh, understandings of their position and so on and so forth um, to do what they want to do and what they can do. So the, 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 this is by no means a, a barrier to anyone playing the characters they want to play. And, um, as I said, we'll also discuss as part of our lines and veils anyway. Um, so, but just to, to put that out there up front. Finally, uh, subject matter. Um, so, um, this is a horror game first and foremost. Um, so, it has a potential to go into um, some some fairly challenging subject matter. Um, this is um, a term. I, I, I don't know if it's it was definitely. Alan, who, who I picked it up from, but I'm moving elsewhere as well. But um, it's likely we may encounter some discomfort as a as a as a uh, as part of playing this game. But what we're looking for is the kind of the the good discomfort of of you know being being shocked and scared by horror media, uh, not anything that actively makes you feel bad and you don't enjoy. Um, so for that reason, we'll be using safety tools. Um, 
uh, and um, we'll be trying to keep keep things to stuff that we will all enjoy engaging with, even if they they you know may make us occasionally wince. Um, the um, part of that is obviously knowing the sort of content that is likely to come up, so that we can make informed judgments about it. Um, uh, sex and violence are both uh, quite core themes within the um, uh, within the the, the 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 take on gothic horror um, of this uh, of this game in particular. If you've seen Penny Dreadful, you know it's it's you know that kind of Grand Grignol style, um, quite sensational. Though importantly, whilst both sex and violence will be kind of present themes, uh, we will not be engaging with with uh, themes of sexual violence um, in this game. Um, it's not really the right uh, venue for it. Um, so that's something that won't come up, um, absolutely. Um, the, so yes, yeah, so for some for some game, there, there might be some slightly more graphic depictions of this and in some, some other games. Um, but again, we'll still, that will still be bound by our comfort with, with the subject matter. Um, one of the things that's also quite important within, I think, within the context of, of knowing about the, the sort of violence is that there is a, um, a mechanical tool within this game for essentially when things go badly, um, you can kind of rewind um, uh, um, time to AAA and um, have a slightly better outcome um, with stuff. We'll, we'll touch on how that happens mechanically again, once we actually get into game proper. Um, however, that 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 can be there as a um, that, that can obviously forestall some of the bad things that happen to your characters, but that is still not a replacement for other safety tools. It kind of can work a little bit like a safety mechanic, but but that it you know we also have safety mechanics, and you can also engage those safety mechanics. And the 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 kind of the presence of that mechanical tool doesn't invalidate any any safety mechanics we'll be using. Um, but one of the, the consequences of this is that yeah, again, things like um, I as a as a um, as a as the keeper as as a GM will be a little bit uh, looser with with throwing out uh, character death and loss of agency uh, and similar things like that than I might otherwise be. So just just be aware of that up front. And again, as ever, we, we'll we'll kind of discuss discuss things when we, when we get to them in play. But that is um, just something to be aware of. Um, that the the kind of the mechanics of the game do mean I might lean a little more into some of that sort of stuff than I might otherwise. Um, in terms of themes that uh, occur often in threats and playbooks, um, such things as murder, cannibalism, body horror, dark sexual themes, erotic sensuality, uh, threats to animals and children, foul language, blasphemy, witchcraft, uh, defiling graves and corpses. Um, we can still line and veil these as needed, but that's some of these will have kind of impacts on certain threats, certain playbooks, um, which again is why it's important we have these discussions up front so that we know which things to avoid. Um, I said broad things we might touch on in terms of Victorian London in general, things like classes and poverty, illness, uh, colonialism and imperialism, economic exploitation, corruption, institutional sexism, homophobia, um, and Victorian treatment of mental illnesses. Um, which you know are all, all things that can potentially come up. Um, so, in a moment, we will. Um, I'll stop this recording, um, and we will have a discussion about our lines and veils, or we'll fill out our lines and veils, and then have any discussion that's needed, um, and go with a couple of other bits and pieces off uh, off the recording. Um, but in terms of the safety tools that we will be using tonight um, and for the rest of the the, the series, um, we will be, uh, as I said, we'll be using lines and veils. These these are. Um, essentially lines are things that we won't have come up in play at all um we, we'll just avert those um th through whatever means are necessary to just just ensure they don't come up in play veils are things that we're happy to have happen but will just be um will not make them central to things as much as possible um we won't go into too much detail on them um we'll you know maybe fade to black we'll just gloss over certain aspects. That's what sort of veils are for. Um, I also include another sort of column um, on once we get to the, the actual tool itself um, on there called um, Ask First, which is just used for stuff that, uh, which can be used for stuff where it's like maybe in general you're okay with it, but there are some circumstances where you might not be. Um, and it just lets us know that we, before we introduce that particular element, we can just have a quick conversation about it um, out of character to ensure that, that we 
we kind of introduce it in a way that we're all happy with. Um, so that's lines and veils. Um, we will also be using um, the script change tool. Um, this is a tool that is used to kind of, again, control the content that, that, that appears in play. Um, and well, not just the content, but the, 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 the manner in which we, we play. Uh, these are a set of commands, a bit like on a video remote control. So primarily the ones that I, th I think are of, of most importance to us um, are pause, uh, most versatile, most useful of them all. Um, if at any point you can just call out pause to just bring the game to stop for a moment. Um, you can invoke this for any reason you want, um, whether that be that you, um, uh, you know, you're in the middle of a scene and the doorbell goes and you have to go answer it and just say, can we just pause for a sec? Yeah, that's obviously, that's absolutely fine. Um, it can also be used if you want to have an out of character discussion uh, about something that's happening in the scene or something that might happen in the scene, something you want to do with the scene. But you just want to check in with everyone else first. Um, and you can, again, call pause for that. Um, basically, you can use call pause if at any point, just want to break from the action for a moment and um, and just either have a quick discussion. It may even just be that like a scene's getting really intense and you're just like, can we just pause for like a second just for me to like gather my wits and, uh, you know, th then we get back into things, um, whatever, whatever you need. Um, there is uh, fast forward. Fast forward can be used um, to skip over something. Um, so this kind of comes back to our veils a bit. So if maybe a, 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 a description of a, a of a of some like a discovery of a body or something is getting maybe a bit too gruesome, then you might call and uh, say, "Can we just fast forward over this bit? I don't, yeah, you know, I, I don't want to uh, to go into any any further detail than this. Can we just sort of move on to the next bit after that? That's fine. Um, we can do that." Um, it may even just be like the kind of a, a conversation or a scene is just getting a bit circular and doesn't isn't really going anywhere. It's like, so can we can we sort of fast forward to like the the the, the action point or the decision point of this scene and, and move on from there? Uh, so that's primarily what that's sort of what we can use fast forward for. Uh, rewind um, is obviously kind of the reverse. That's that's saying can we step back and change something that's just happened? Uh, again, this might be um, because you realize actually. Um, We've started going down this particular route, but I think this is going to go to a place I don't want to go to. Can we step back and change it to do, do things a little bit differently so we don't wander into that territory? Um, or it might just be something like, oh, I realized what I just said wasn't quite what I meant. It came across as, as, as um, far more aggressive than I meant. I wasn't trying to threaten them. I was just trying to ask some questions. Can I rewind and phrase it differently? Again, that's, that's perfectly fine. That's what that's there for. Um, I said those are the three most important ones. There's a couple of others that are in the um, PDF that's in, in the shared folder if you do need to refer back to that. Um, and again, as well, um, we obviously have those like command words, pause, fast forward, rewind that you can call uh, call out. But if you just want to use natural language to, to do the same thing, that's also cool. Um, ultimately, just us talking with one another is, is sort of one of the better safety tools out there. So um, uh, do, do always feel free to use that. Um, we'll also be using the X card um, for anyone not familiar with it. The X card is basically, again, just another way of saying, um, can we remove certain content from, from the scene, from the game? Um, this can be done by, by kind of doing an X with your hands, by um, putting an X in the chat inside there, um, or just by saying, I'd like to X card that. Um, give my usual caveat here. Um, if I'm flicking between um, tabs, I might not see someone doing doing this with their hands or, or seeing it in chat. So saying it out loud is probably the quickest way to get my attention. But conversely, if if the other players notice that someone has put like an X in chat or has put um, their hands up and I appear to be completely ignoring it, feel free to shout out on their behalf as well just to, to attract my attention. Um, if uh, the X card is called, you can, as I will, first is to say you can, you can X card anything. Again, this might be some contents come up that you're not happy with this, make this, uh, this uncomfortable for you. you. We can get rid of that. It might just be that you feel tonally something's a bit off. Like if, you know, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the name of a character or, or, um, it's a kind of something is getting a bit gonzo and silly. And it's just, you just feel like actually this is kind of, bringing me out of the, the 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 kind of creepy horror vibe we're going for anything like that you can you can x card and we can remove that um if you do x card something um, i might need to ask you to clarify um uh, what it is that you're x carding if it's not like immediately obvious from context um 
but I won't ask you to justify or explain why you want it gone. Um, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to explain, that's that's fine. But you're never under any obligation to explain why you want it gone. Uh, we don't have to have that conversation if you're not comfortable with it. The fact that that someone is uncomfortable with with that that particular content is enough. Uh, we'll we'll take that as it stands. Um, so yeah, those are our primary kind of uh, mechanical safety tools, as it were. Um, we also are playing using the open door policy. Um, this is just simply to say um, if uh, at any point you need to step away from the game for any reason, for any length of time, that is perfectly fine. Um, whether you need to leave the, the session because you're, you're not feeling well or you're just not, not enjoying the session, you can you can just walk away for the rest of the session. That's fine. If you want to walk away from the rest of the series, but that's also fine. If you just think, actually, I've I've started playing this and I've realized I'm just not in the mood for for gothic horror at the minute, and and I want to leave. Perfectly cool. Um, or it might be just like, oh, again, you've got to run off and answer the door. Um, got to go. Well, you, you know, your 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 phone's drying out. And you need to go grab a drink. Anything like that feel free to step away at any time. We said I will be scheduling breaks um, uh, fairly regularly, but um, if you need to leave at any other time, that's fine. So don't, don't feel you need to wait until uh, I officially call a break if you need to take some time away from the, the, uh, the game. Um, it is useful often um, if, if you are going to be away for a, an extended period of time or you are leaving uh, completely, if you can let me know just so I know for like planning around that for the rest of the session um but you don't need to if you need to leave then then you need to leave and that's that's fine um you know don't you don't uh, it's useful if you can explain but you don't don't owe an explanation as it were so uh that's a slightly long-winded introduction but i hope um we're all okay with that uh so what i'm going to do now is uh pause the recording and we'll just uh give you a moment to go through our lines and veils Awesome. So we have um, gone through our safety tools. Um, and what we're going to do now is um, just going to um, uh, go over our um, um, the, the playbooks that are available. And I think I think um, most most people have kind of already expressed an interest in in the um, in the characters, but um, I think that this um is um just quite a good warm-up if nothing else um so as i've already spoken quite a bit uh i'm going to ask um um the players to you'll see like uh, on the character keeper towards the uh top in, in row seven there's a little blurb for each of the um each of the characters it just tells a little bit more about them um uh, or if you're looking at the PDFs and it's towards the top of the 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 um, the, the, the the character uh, the paperwork on the uh, PDFs as well. Um, so I'm going to go around in uh, order of who I can see in front of me again um, for, uh, for the time being. Um, so uh, yeah, Chloe, could I ask you to read the introduction to the acolyte, please? Yeah. You are part of London's respectable middle class, a professional cog in the machine of prosperity, a solid brick in the wall of propriety. But while your days are spent in humdrum toil, your nights are devoted to a secret master. A member of an esoteric society with your masked brethren, you indulge in blasphemies and depravities that would shock your friends and colleagues. Together, you work towards a plan that will reshape the world in your master's vision. You work for Hargrave House in the capacity of your day job, concealing your other loyalties from them. Hargrave House is a wealth of occult secrets and could also become a major threat to your master. Excellent, thank you. Um, uh, I, sh I should also point out this point that the, the Acolyte is a playbook that um, uh, I, I'm working on myself. It's not one of the uh, official core ones at the moment, but um, uh, that is uh, is something I'm, I'm working on. So we, we kind of uh, have that available for playtesting um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so uh, Anders, if I can ask you to read The American, please. Um, sure. Don't, I have the text in the PDF for these was not <laughs> easy for me to read. Um, 
You grew up in a big city on the eastern seaboard of the United States, the scion of a prominent family, but you detested that life, the formality, the pretension, the venomous hypocrisy. And so you went west. You had adventures, got good with a gun, even joined a traveling show for a time. But then came the curse and everything changed. You did your best to control it and some nights were definitely worse than others, but eventually it got to be too much. Even your days were affected by the changes within you. Your behavior became reckless and unpredictable. And then you had to run far away. In the end, it was London calling, thick, throbbing mass of humanity within which to lose yourself. The whole world and whole world and all its lovely pleasures right within your grasp. But the curse has found you like it always does. Hopefully these new folks, these hunters you throw them in with, can help you, help you for good, permanent life. And then the, when the time comes. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, and next, um, uh, yes, Sabine, if you wouldn't mind reading The Explorer. Okay. Um... You were born into a world of fantastic wealth and privilege. You could have spent your days cosseted by luxury with nothing more pressing than deciding what to wear to that evening dinner party. But you chose a different life. You chose to serve your queen. You leveraged your wealth and connection to explore the world, to chart unknown territory. And now you have a mountain range named after you, a fitting honor considering you tower over the other Britons. Your strength, your intellect, your cunning, none can match it, none except the mastermind. The mastermind who plots ceaselessly against her majesty, whose mind and resources dwarf your own. You have conquered every trial the gods have placed before you, but the mastermind is something altogether different. And your new work, your work with Hargrave House, Hargrave House is connected to them in some way. You spend your days and nights exploring the true heart of darkness, the monsters that stalk the streets of London. But none are so monstrous as your opponent, the one who sits on the other side of the chessboard. Will Great Britain still be standing when the grand game is over? Perfect, thank you. And uh, yeah, David, if you wouldn't mind reading the factotum. You had a life before you entered the service of your employer, but the details of that life are unimportant. All that matters now is the person you serve, and Hargrave House, where you will grow ancient and die, if you're lucky. More likely, your employer's colleagues, these hunters, will be the end of you, overturning things that should remain hidden and goading on terrors that dwell in dark places. You'll do your best to help them, of course, to keep them alive, because without them, what are you really? Brilliant, thank you very much. And um, as that was a short one, uh, I'll, I'll get you to do the mother and we'll go back around the other way. Oh, sure. Um, few understand the mysteries of human anatomy like you do. You are one of the most brilliant medical minds in London and could take your place as a lecturer at any number of esteemed academies. But you have different ideas, different plans. You are no longer interested in merely preserving life, but creating it. And so you will do what you must to survive tending to the prostitutes dying of consumption, assisting Scotland Yard with grisly forensic inquiry, and creeping about in the dark with these new people, these hunters with whom you share a home. But always you are focused on the new life growing in your secret womb, your child, the one you hope will capture even the faintest reflection of the person you loved and lost. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, and Sabine, if you wouldn't mind reading The Undeniable, not <clears throat> who would who could deny that chance to read the undeniable um you have always been the most beautiful person in the room your looks have opened doors for you as long as you can remember all the money and material things anyone could want laid at your feet artists have found inspiration in the brightness of your eyes the delicate curve of your cheekbones the plump softness of your lips one such artistic work a masterwork rises above them all, for it captures the essence of you. It is, quite simply, more you than you. Lately, people sacrifice everything to be near you, to please you, and, if they're lucky, to touch you. But what to do when you get bored with being one of the gods? Brilliant. 
sorry i'm muted uh brilliant so yeah uh thank you for that and um yeah finally uh Anders, if you'd like to uh read the vessel yes um for as long as you can remember dark entities have been near they lurk just inside your peripheral vision just at the mirror's edge when you close your eyes you can actually feel them their cold breath their oily touch an occasional feverish embrace they want to be inside you. They want to rub against your guts and deposit their power. Others are drawn to you. Others are drawn to you as well. Those who would use you to master these dark things in order to serve their own agenda. Some of these interlopers, these usurpers, can be of use, such as the hunters with whom you share a home. Others, like the coven, are best avoided. In either case, you are no one's object, tool, or weapon. You are no mere bystander. Your fate is yours to shape. Perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, I know um, we've people have mostly expressed interest in in uh, playbooks so far. So, um, I know Chloe, uh, you've you've said you would be interested in, in taking a look at the acolyte, and hopefully that will work out okay for you. We'll uh, we, we we may do some tweaking of that on the fly, but uh, let's see how that goes. Um, Sabine, you said you're interested in the mother. Um, and uh, Anders in the vessel. Um, so um, I guess uh, David, it comes around to you. Um, which uh, which of the uh, which of the remainder um, uh, are uh, calling out to you? I, I could see myself doing well with either of them. Um, I am. If you made me choose right now, I would lean perhaps toward the American um, on the basis that. When, when I played Brindlewood Bay, I played as um, someone who was very heavily into the occult and maxed out their sensitivities for, and was really kind of played a little bit more like the Vessel playbook. And I think that cool. might be a very good change to move towards the physical. Also, I, I suspect that I am factually the token American of this group. Um, also true, also true. In, in, in reality, <laughs> so it's only appropriate. Um, but uh, that's maybe what I'm leaning toward if, if we have to select right now. Yeah, uh, no, that, that that sounds cool. Um, I, I I mean, honestly, they're all they're all really good fun. Um, so so I think uh, there's there's probably not a bad choice uh, in there. Um, I suppose the only thing I would say is that, in terms of um, role within the within like Hargrave House as a whole, there's there's some slight overlap between the factotum and the acolyte, but the, not much. Um but yeah, I think um yeah the, the American certainly sounds good unless unless you feel like one of the others is, is more more to your taste at the minute. But the, the the American is a very fun playbook. Um that sounds that sounds fine to me. Yeah we'll we'll go ahead and go with that I think. Cool. So um I'll just give a quick introduction to what you need to do to set up the characters. Then I'll pause recording um, and we'll take a break um, and then I'll give people time to fill out their character. Uh, as I said, there is not much to do um, for characters at the start of play. Um, there is, um, th th this is quite a fancy uh, um, uh, little uh, um, character keeper that uh, Drew put together. So um, you'll see the little yellow highlight kind of guides you through through where, where to put stuff in. Um, uh, at the outset, so uh, you can fill out your obviously your name and, and pronouns on there. Um, there are drop downs to create your character's name and appearance. Uh, you don't have to use those; they're there for inspiration. But if you want to go with something else, um, that is also perfectly cool. Um, the um, um, so yeah, you've got your your name, your look. Uh, you'll have your stats, um, which are vital vitality, vitality, vitality. I don't know why I can't say that. Uh, composure, reason, presence, and sensitivity. Um, we'll go into more about what they all stand for in a moment, but that you can see them. See a little brief description if you hover over the their name um, in the character keeper. Um, you can you you will, all of you will add plus one to one of those stats at the start of play um, of your choice. Um, the um you will start with one of your moves ticked which are a bit further down the character sheet um 
you will also start with or most of you, I should say. Um, actually, no, I don't think anyone's playing the Explorer, so it's less of a thing, but most of you will start with one additional move that you can, again, select from those that are available uh, further down the character, character sheet. Um, and essentially, that is all we need to um, at the start of play. Um, as I mentioned, we will um, detail more about um, your character's um, uh, your character's, um, you know, history as we, we move through play. Um, but I'm going to pause our recording now. He says losing, losing the button that allows him to do so. Awesome. So we have our characters, um, uh, detailed out, um, to, to start with now. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to um, ask um, ask people to uh, introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their character. Um, and as as I just said, this this will be very much be um, a little bit uh, at this stage as um, the kind of the the arc of this game is that we learn more about the characters um, as we as we proceed through the game. Um, so we don't know a, a whole lot about them at the beginning, um, other than than who they appear to be um, and. Uh, a little bit more we'll detail in just a second. Um, I'm going to go through um, and um, as, as this is uh, Chloe's, I believe, first time playing a game with the gun, I will, I will be merciful this time. I'm going to go in, in reverse character keeper order uh, to start us off with. Um, so I will be starting um, uh, on this with yourself if you would uh, like to introduce us to the vessel. Sure. Um... <clears throat> I'm playing the vessel, uh, whose name is, and I'm not sure if my, I'm pronouncing this correctly, but Arden Paisbury uh, is my my guest at it anyway. Um, he is uh, a gentleman uh, around Turkey, I think. Um, I don't know how much detail do you want to me to go into. Um, yeah, no, just, just a little bit about kind of um, uh, what what uh, what he he um, what he looks like, and and kind of I guess what what we might have seen of him, like kind of uh, what you know about um, uh, you know his his general deal. Uh, I guess if if yeah, that's not yeah. too 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 vague, uh, <laughs> a way of putting it. <laughs> as I'm struggling with words myself. Um, he wears fine clothes. Um, I think his mood or his 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 vibe, his uh, his uh, general demeanor, it varies a bit. Sometimes he's fairly cold and distant, and sometimes he's um, I think nervous and a bit uh, a bit insecure. Um, I don't think he notices himself that much. That is that he has these mood uh, changes. Um, he can probably come off as a bit arrogant from time to time, or other times a bit needy and and uh, like uh, looking for for um, approval and and uh, that sort of thing. Um, Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's cool. the, obvious, the obvious things. Yeah, awesome. So uh, from your playbook, you start off with the rites of salt and smoke, which is um, all about contacting dark entities to, to perform magical rituals. Um, yeah. What 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 did you choose for your 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 second uh, move? A thinning of the veil. Um, he is able to use uh, star charge astrology, that sort of thing, uh, to uh, catch glimpses of the future, to maybe, maybe find out some things about what, what what's about to happen. Perfect. That sounds that, that sounds awesome. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, next, um, Sabine, um, if you would like to uh, uh, introduce us to the mother. Yes, hello. I'm going to play John Fanworth, he, him pronouns, who uses the playbook of the mother. Um, 
John is, um, well, he has very piercing eyes, but he's very clean. He seems to be very clean, cleanly. He's, his hands are always very well washed. He is a medical expert. Um, he did study medicine. He did not need to. He, uh, you have to understand that he's independently wealthy, of course. He's, uh, I imagine that he's the son of a peer. But uh, nonetheless, he studied medicine. Uh, he's a great aficionado of the opera. You will often hear him talking about going to the opera. Um, he's otherwise very mild-mannered, very polite very correct and the way he treats other people. He occasionally goes out to treat the less fortunate in life, of course. And um, yeah, that is and uh, usually impeccably dressed, but there is not a lot of warmth to be found. He's mild mannered, as I said, but he's not hearty and he does not seem to be overly emotional. Um, for his moves, he has the child move. He has a secret laboratory in Hargrove House where they, he's building a person from body parts he acquires to, throughout the city. A quite a normal undertaking, I think, for the son of a peer, I imagine. Is it not? Anyway, um, as his other move, I have chosen beneath the skin. Uh, so when he examines, examines uh, I don't know, a corpse, uh, I can ask uh, the keeper things about the corpse, like how did they die? And that gives me a clue. And or what would an untrained eye overlooks here? Another clue, or maybe another, maybe a different clue. Or can I take a body part of the for the child without anyone noticing it? Um, which is not resulting in a clue, but maybe in a body part. Excellent. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, uh, I, I, it, when I most recently played this, I, I also played the uh, the mother. And uh, yeah, shopping around for body parts is always good fun. Um, Awesome, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, next. Um, oh, and thank you for whoever went and shrunk down the ones we weren't using. Um, I intended to do that and then promptly forgot. But uh, yeah, David, uh, if you'd like to introduce us to uh, the American. Yes, it would be my pleasure to introduce everybody to uh, Beatrice Farley, who goes by her old stage name back when she was out west. Trixie Trixie, that's T-R-I-C-K-S-Y, as in one who is prone to tricking people, and Trixie, T-R-I-X-I-E, as in the abbreviation for Beatrice. So um, Trixie Trixie is sort of this old society or, or high society, old money, um, educated girl from the upper seaboard or um, uh, eastern seaboard of America who for various reasons has uh, historically traveled out west and turned into this grizzled cowgirl who spent some time traveling about with the stereotypical freak show. So she has this sort of outwardly theatrical and showy appearance but inwardly has this very jaded and haunted look behind her eyes and has since taken off to London to throw in with Hargrave House. But um, unfortunately has found herself face to face with things even worse than those which she confronted back on the North American continent. Um, as for her moves, uh, the first is one called the quickening, which essentially means that at the start of each dusk phase, she has to roll or else uh, become some kind of semi-werewolfish lycanthropic monster that is so far undefined but beyond that. Um, and her additional move is that she's got a gun. She has the 1851 Colt Navy revolver in her personal quarters, and that is never marked when using it to take advantage on a die roll. So very simple and easy to understand. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, and yes, uh, last but not least, uh, Chloe, um, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about who you're playing tonight. Uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, uh, the Acolyte, uh, indeed, yeah. Hi, yeah, I'm Chloe and I'm going to be playing the Acolyte and that's um, Zan Lansky, who's the um, recently um, hired kind of legal um, assistant slash sort of accountant at Hargrave House who's uh, working away in a dusty office at the back dealing with all sorts of kind of complicated paperwork and business deals and money things that the the other hunters don't really have time to be or inclination to be that interested in. Zan can often be seen uh, sort of um, hunched over a pile of papers and uh, smoking a cigar um, 
it smells faintly of uh, cigars and, and brandy whenever uh, they kind of walk down the hallway. Um, Sam's quite unfriendly and um, keeps themselves very much to themselves in Hargrave House, kind of quite um, uh, reticent to, to discuss things with the other inhabitants of the house, keeps themselves busy and jealously guards their uh, days and evenings off, kind of going off um, out away from Hargrave House, vis visit friends, visit family, not sure, but they, uh, they you know, it's like clockwork, they, they're, they're off on the dots as soon as their, um, the, their time off starts, out they go. So that's the Zan Lansky. Perfect, thank you. Um... So yeah, you start off um, with your move seven to the two-faced god, um, uh, which is, is all about the your dual role as, as a, an upstanding member of society and a member of a slightly less salubrious um, uh, secret order. Uh, what's what's the other move that you've gone for? I've gone for the cover up, which is that uh, once per threat, when I receive a clue, I may explain how it could implicate my society or one of its members and then keep that clue secret from the other hunters, writing it here rather than adding it into the general clues for the threat. So, um, yeah, I can basically hold something back from the other hunters if I think it's going to put my society at risk of exposure. Nice, nice. Thank you very much. Um, awesome. So what we're going to do now is, um, uh, we, this has kind of been alluded to already in a couple of people's um, uh, um, backstories, uh, not backstories, sorry, care moves, that's what I was looking for. But um, you'll see down down towards the bottom of the character, uh, character keeper, um, you have a list of stuff for your personal quarters. Um, what these are are basically a list of items um these items can essentially do two things uh one is it's something you always have access to um nearly always have access to it's possible to lose them in some circumstances but in general you always have access to those items um and that might just give you fictional positioning to do something um so for instance it might just be if you've got a um uh, i mean to use a very very easy example um of the uh, um of, of the americans uh um uh um, Colt, uh, Colt Navy revolver. Um, the fact that you have a revolver means that you can shoot at people. You know, you have a gun, you can fire it. That is a, is a thing that you are able to do. Um, so um, that's that's something that's available to you. Um, generally speaking, um, if you wish to, um, if if you kind of are using your something that's in your personal quarters to um, aid you. Um, you can uh, put a tick next to it um, and that will give you advantage on that roll, which is to say it will give you an extra dice to roll. You roll three rather than two d6. We'll get to the rolling mechanics in, in a moment um, and take the higher two. So it makes you better at doing things or potentially cancels out disadvantage if that's been applied. But um, I said, well, we'll cover that in a moment. So you'll, said, you'll each start with four items, but the way we will do this is by... Um, um, uh, we're going to go around um, in turn, um, and each uh, each one of us is going to. We'll, we'll go around character by character, and each of the rest of us will choose one item that we would find um, in their um, in their personal quarters, um, and th th this will both give them some some stuff to start off with, um, and uh, we'll 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 maybe maybe we'll give some hints as to what we might learn about their character uh, later on. So, um, uh, so yeah, uh, that is, is what we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing next. Um, so we've, we've introduced all the characters, as I said, we're going to, um, I'm going to ask um, first, um, I'll start with Zan. Um, what is what does your um, uh, what does your uh, room, your office in in Hargrove House? What's what's the sort of the general uh, the general vibe of it? What does it kind of uh, what does it look like? Um, 
got a day room where I'm doing the kind of legal paperwork and that's um it's actually quite neat and tidy and very well organized um there's a couple of filing cabinets there are stacks of paper on the desk but they're definitely stacks of paper that I'm doing things with and um you know I, I sort of don't really like people going in there because I don't want them to mess anything up because if we lose bits of paperwork that need to go to the solicitor's office or that need to go to the lawyers then we're going to be in trouble so I'm going to sort of uh, shoot people out of there. I do have personal courses as well um, that are quite uh, sparsely decorated, don't seem to have very, very visibly seem to have very much and there's a, a couple of suits you know sort of two suits maybe uh, one slightly nicer than the other hanging up um and uh and also a a, a sort of a fairly nice um evening dress that never gets worn that's just hanging in the wardrobe um and yeah and, and not very many personal items at all that you can that you could see on a quick glance if you were just sort of having a poking your head in there yeah excellent so we're now going to add just a few little uh, touches of uh of personality maybe or or at least uh, items of interest to uh, to those rooms so uh um yeah uh, david i'm going to ask you first to detail um one item that that we see and i guess this this, this might be something in, in either the office or the um, um or their, their 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 personal quarters that we uh, uh we see what uh, what do you think is one thing that's in there Gosh, I'm always so, um, uh, I always have such difficulty being put on the spot with these um, personal quarters questions. Um, I, and we want to come up with items that could have some practical use. Yeah, could, um, could something, maybe something that could have some practical use or, or, um, um, or that may be hints at something the you know that may or may not come to pass about the uh about the, the what what the character is like but obviously at this point that's that's very much just a kind of um speculative uh thing um i suppose but yeah sure um, would it be acceptable to put an ambiguous vial of uh white powder that is otherwise undefined and we just figure out what that's for later on because I, I couldn't come up with it now if I tried. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, that's, that's cool. A, that's that's a brilliant idea. Um, yeah, I think uh, suspicious white powder. Yeah, sounds like a great <laughs> thing to have in there. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's that sounds awesome. We can we can find out more about that uh, later on. That's 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 great. Thank you, thank you for that one. Um, yeah, Sabine, um, what's another item that we find uh, in in Zan's uh, uh, in Zan's rooms? I think it's a very nice silver pen, right? Because you're a lawyer. And then I think uh, maybe you got given by your mentor at the university where you're studying or somebody else who knows. But it, uh, I think it has an inscription in ancient Greek that I think few can read. Maybe you can't read it either. Anyway, it's, uh, it, it still writes very nicely. Something. Yeah, great. That's going in there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, and um, uh, Anders, what's uh, what's an item you would like to add in there? I was thinking of something like um, I don't know if this existed at the time, but like a, a tax calendar, you now like a list of of uh, of prominent citizens, their earnings, that sort of thing. I don't know if that's a, a, a thing. Oh, like um, like like the um, the list of the um, uh, peers, hereditary peers and uh, that kind of thing. I've forgotten yeah, what it's called. Yeah. It's got a name in oh, Britain, it's got um, a particular name. Is it um, Burke's Peerage, I think, is well, oh, well, one Burke, of them. Burke one ha had one in the 18th century, but there's a kind of more, more recent right. one. But yeah, maybe yeah. it's an out of date copy of Burke's uh, Peerage. Yeah. That would be quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was thinking of, of that sort of thing, but like with, with lots of notes and annotations and, and that sort of thing, personal, a personalized uh, version. But very good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, awesome. Um, and uh, my um, my last uh, my my chance to um, add one in, um, I think um, 
yeah um i'm going to go for um a um um an ivory handled um letter opener useful thank you yes <laughs> i'll take that <laughs> awesome thank you uh cool so yeah next um uh is our american so yeah trixie um what uh what again would you like to give us just a general uh vibe for um your your um quarters at uh, hargrove house so i think the the mood board is going to be um dark western uh so you we have maybe a uh we weathered leather tapestry on one wall and a, uh, a large cross that hangs over the very Spartan simple bed. And the cross is actually just a grave marker of uh, one of her own that died on the road that she yanked out of the ground and took with her as a memento. And she's kept that over the bed to ward off the dark forces that, that, that uh, she faces. Um, but other than that, it's gonna be just sort of, um, uh, strange memorabilia, uh, souvenirs, and little tokens of affection she has received from the various members of the Carney kind of freak show that she used to travel with. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, um, um, uh, yeah, just go background from for, from sort of right left on the character here. So yeah, Sabine, um, would you uh, like to uh, add an item to the um, uh, rooms of uh, Trixie. Mm -hmm. A lot of, lots of things I can think of, but um, let me... Oh, I think what you have is gold nugget, a really large one. You found it or were given it or stole it, who knows. But it's, it's, it's about the size of a gold nugget. It's very heavy. You can hit people with it if you want or sell it for fun or so whatever. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Andres, um, is there uh, something you have in mind for uh, Trixie's room? Um, I just keep coming up with things that aren't very practically useful, like a, a stuff vulture or something, like a mounted, uh, <laughs> uh, that sort of thing. Um, but I think probably um, like a tomahawk uh, from uh, uh, like a hatchet, that sort of thing from from your your traveling circus days. Um, useful for for throwing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and uh, Chloe, uh, how about yourself? Is that something you would like to, uh, to add to the room? Yeah, I think you've got some uh, land deeds that um, to some pa patch of land in De somewhere in Dakota, North Dakota probably, and these land deed papers are, have uh, blood, old blood stains on them. So again, not very helpful, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's quite right. Uh, it, it's always fun coming up with ways to, to use stuff. Um, and I think I'm going to add in um, I'm going to say um, a bottle of uh, um, a bottle of good Tennessee whiskey. Awesome. Awesome. Lots of things to hit or shoot people with or bribe them with, which is right up, <laughs> right up this character's alley. So perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Um, cool. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, next. Um, uh, so um, is it Dr. Fenworth? I, I should, should just, just to clarify now. I, I... Yes, I think it is. It is. Yeah. Um, uh, cool. So um, uh, that is uh, awesome. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Fenworth, again, what, what's the, uh, the, the general um, uh, uh, overview of your, of your rooms? 
I believe uh, since the Victorians were still quite into um, more stuffy, I think, things, I have only the impression of Jane Austen who liked uh, tapestries and rooms chock full of stuff. So I think it is, it is what you would expect of a wealthy man of, um, of, good, of a good lineage to have in his room. It's not terribly personal though. I mean, the tapestry, the, the wallpapers are very nice and the chairs are very nice. There is a large uh, table with uh, all kinds of um, drawers. And um, uh, of course there's a large um, cupboard probably the wrong word, shelf, with uh, medical, medical books that he can look at and study, but nothing, uh, nothing very uh, gruesome or untoward that you could take someone in there as a guest and they would not be shocked. Probably. I don't know what else is there. Yes, uh, the, 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 some of the cupboards may be perhaps less salubrious, but we shall see. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, uh, Anders, uh, what would you like to, uh, what do you think we see in um, uh, Dr. Fenworth's uh, rooms? I think there's uh, a well-used microscope. Cool. That's, uh, that's, that's nice. Uh, thank you. Um, and yeah, Chloe, how about yourself? There's um, a bunch of um, books in German that are, that are about um, the transmutation of uh, base substances into gold and other pseudoscientific things. Nice, nice, thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, David, how about yourself? I don't want to be, well, I, I feel like between the white powder and my whiskey, everyone needs to have at least some amount of drugs in their room. So I'm going to go with an especially potent tincture of laudanum. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I'm going to go for, um, oh, what, what do we have? That, what, what else do I, would, would be cool to have in here? Um, I think... Um, I think that we will have um, Oh yeah, no, we do know that so I think a um, uh, I'm trying to think of the the, the word. A gramophone, essentially, the probably one at the stage, one of the ones that's like a wax wax cylinder discs rather than an actual record player. But uh, um, uh, yeah, um, cool. Thank you. And um, yeah, last but not least, um, Ardent. What's what again? What's the general sort of vibe of your room? And then we'll 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 detail out the last uh, last elements of that for you. Um, I think, I think much like his personality, there's, it, it depends on, on, on uh, what day it is. Uh, some days it's, everything is extremely neat and, and uh, all the books are lined up on the shelves properly and uh, the star charts are all folded away and that sort of thing. And Every other day, it's just a complete mess. There are books open everywhere. The, the star charts are, are pinned up on the wall. And, and uh, uh, everything is just uh, disheveled and, and uh, in disarray. Um, but I think he has um, the, uh, cur the, there's very heavy curtains that are always uh drawn covering the windows and uh there's probably a desk and uh, a small small cot on the somewhere shoved away in a corner uh, overstuffed uh, armchair that sort of thing 
Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, Chloe, uh, what what uh, what else do we see in um, uh, in Ardent's room? I've got a good one. Uh, it's also not very helpful, but it's a stack of um, cartes de visite. So it's um, this is the periods in Victorian Britain where celebrities, people like Oscar Wilde and such, were having like cards made up of photographs of themselves or pictures of themselves and then they would like print them and sign them and you've basically got a stack of these carte de visites signed by various uh, celebs that you, you could choose who they are um that you that you've got uh, uh somewhere uh, stashed maybe wrapped in a nice ribbon on the side table somewhere awesome thank you uh yeah and uh, david how about you uh, in keeping with the uh, occult uh, theme, um, let's say that you have a, uh, a cursed crystal ball that you've been trying to get rid of for years, but no one is willing to buy it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, Sabine. I think what you have... Uh... Uh, in keeping with the star chart, you have an orrery. That's um, this this thing where you have all the planets and stuff like it on it, and that is made of uh, brass and it's uh, also pretty heavy. But it's also very valuable because all the planets are studded with color appropriate um, little gems, printers, or stuff like that. Charts, not printers, charts. Awesome. Um, thank you. And um, I think um, I'm going to go with um, I think that there are like a pair of horseshoes linked together with a length of chain, almost like handcuffs, but um, but yeah, made of horseshoes. Cool. So um, we we now have our initial uh, um, items in our personal quarters. Um, so what we will uh, what we'll do um, is um, I will give a, give a brief explanation of the um, of like the the structure of play um, and 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 how sort of stuff works uh, in a, in a general sense, um, and then I will introduce our first um, our first threat. Um, and then we'll take another break, um, and then then we'll we'll get a little bit of uh, a little bit of play in um, in our first uh, first phase of the of the game. Um, so um, th this has already been kind of alluded to in in a couple of the moves and stuff we've talked about, but play in um, in the between is split up into phases. Um, there are two main phases and two kind of um, upkeep phases, um, as it were. Um, the, the the and these these are all based on the time of day. So we have dawn, which is like a sort of an upkeep phase, uh, daytime, which is the, one of the longer phases. The in daytime, this is where you get to broadly go around London and do do what you want. Um, you uh, in this phase, you largely have the, the 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 say of what scenes you want to see happen. After a certain point, I will end that phase, but it's it's fairly open. It's fairly you can get up to whatever you like. Broadly speaking, we will. Um, set up scenes that you want to see, go and investigate stuff you want to look at, and so on and so forth. Uh, we then have the, um, the dusk phase um, where we kind of prepare for the night ahead. Um, we do a little bit more upkeep stuff there. We have a little bit of um, an explanation. Then finally, we have the night phase. Um, the night phase is um, similar to the day phase, but with, with a major difference is that in the dusk phase, where everyone will sort of set up one thing that they want to set out to achieve that night. Um, but in the dusk, uh, in the night phase, I will set each scene up um, essentially, and well, you know, I won't be, I won't, I won't go out of my way to block you just, just for, um, uh, you know, for the hell of it. Um, sometimes I may throw complications in your path that prevent you from doing what you were actually planning to do that night because something else rears its head, uh, so on and so forth. But that's sort of the, the broad structure of it. Um, when we got into a threat, which we will in a second, um, one of the important things to note is that most threats um, can only be resolved during the night phase. Um, 
so so that's kind of where where a lot of the action happens as it were um, whereas the day phase tends to be a bit more laid back and a bit less um, intense um so that's kind of what, what we look like when we start getting into play um in the dawn phase which is sort of nominally where we start off um there are two okay, one of the main things that we will all do um is this this will really only kick in the next dawn phase most of the stuff but one thing you do get to do and i think most people have done this already um is you have a number of questions on your on your character sheet um which uh, three of them are set they're always the same all of you have them which are did you did did you all um you know collectively answer a question did you resolve a threat um, and did you experience an echo in the night which we'll discuss uh later probably next week to be honest um those are um uh those are those questions are always there you, and then you get to choose two others from a list um and you get to do this every dawn phase. You get to they're, they're the ones that you have free choice over. You can you can switch them around every every dawn phase um, if you want to focus your character on something a little bit different. Um, that's fine. Um, the um, the reason for the these these questions is come the next dawn phase. Um, for each of the questions that you are able to um, answer, um, you will get an XP. Um, it's it's basically the 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 primary way of gathering XP in this game. There's a, there's a couple of others, mostly from playbook moves and stuff, but that's the the, the main one. Um, so yeah, that's that's how that all works. Um, the next thing that we will do is introduce our first threat. So the threat I am going to introduce today is called the Limehouse Lurker. Jenny Johnston, the proprietor of an opium den in Limehouse, tells you a story that has not yet reached Scotland Yard or the papers. Three people have been found dead in recent days, the bodies completely exsanguinated. The first was a prostitute called Soft Jimmy, found in the dark corner of the opium den. The second was a young mother, Charla Bell, found in an alleyway behind the Limehouse school. And the third was a Chinese sailor, Zhao Donghai, found outside a pub near the Regent's Canal dock, the Dog and Whistle. Jenny, an informal community leader in Limehouse, has been keeping the bodies in her basement. She's hesitant to go to the authorities because she fears it will cause trouble for the small but thriving Chinese immigrant community in the district. She heard that Hargrave House has experience with matters such as this and has asked for your help. Um, so I'm going to ask. This feels like a, a Dr. Fenworth question. Um, in uh, Hargrave House knows about creatures that drink the blood of their victims. They're called vampires. Mm -hmm. A detail in Jenny's story convinces you that this particular vampire has the body of a small child. What is that detail? Um, I think it is... Uh... Hmm. Yes, I think uh, on one of the bodies uh, there was there were fingerprints like like somebody held someone with force and that caused bruises. And these uh, bruises they are inconsistent with a large man or even a grown woman. They are very they are from a very small person. Awesome, thank you. Um... Yeah, so the vampire is physically a child, but that doesn't mean it's young. Vampires never physically age beyond how old they were when they turned, and an old vampire has to be handled in a very different way from a young one. So the next thing you all need to know um, is that there are a number of questions uh, and opportunities for this particular threat. The way these work, um, the questions each have a complexity um, and each have an opportunity. Um, the complexity uh, ties into a move called the theorized move, which we'll, we'll get on to later on before you probably are unlikely to see it, unless you, unless you do very well, which is entirely possible. But um, the theorized move is basically when you start talking about how, what, what, uh, how you might answer a question. Um, and to do this, you will draw on a number of clues that you will find during your investigation. 
um, clues we shouldn't be noted for this point. We, we talk about, talk about here about uh, capital C clues. Uh, these are clues that have uh, you, you have a direct mechanical effect. You may pick up kind of like contextual clues as well during your investigation. But but what we talk about here is is like I said, capital C clues. They they have kind of a they, they're a um, um, what the primary goal of doing your investigations is to find these out. Um, Essentially, the way it works is you want to um, you have to make a roll on two d six minus the complexity um, of that particular question you're trying to answer, plus the number of clues you have found. So, essentially, to get a positive on the dice, you need to have more. You need to tie more clues to that answer than its complexity. Um, this, in this sense, this works in the same way as, as Brindlewood Bay, if you have played that before. What's a little bit different about these is that there are a number of different um, uh, a number of different clues. So in, in Brindlewood Bay, a mystery has a complexity. Um, in this, there are a number of different questions, and each of those questions has a different has a complexity of its own. Um, so when you when you go to answer when you go to theorize when you go to answer a question, we'll always be looking at that. This particular um, question, uh, this particular threat, sorry, has three questions, which I will go through now. The first one is, is the vampire young or old? Um, this one is what's, what's known as a threshold question, basically. The answer to this will then determine which subsequent question you're able to answer. So you have to answer this question first. Often you'll be able to answer any of the questions that you wish in any order you wish, but sometimes there will be one like this that you 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 have to answer first, essentially. Um, so that's the first one. That 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 question has a complexity of four. The next question uh, is, if it is young, what was the child's home life, home life like before they were turned? And that also has a complexity of four. When you've answered that question, it gives you an opportunity to resolve the threat by luring the vampire into a scene reminiscent of its home life and then destroying it or making arrangements for it to safely feed on a regular basis. The third question is, if it is old, where is the vampire's nest? That is also complexity four. Uh, and that leads on to the opportunity of resolving the threat by infiltrating its nest and then either destroying it or just convincing it to leave London through, through other means. Um, so obviously in this, particular, in this particular threat, your answer to the first question will determine which of those second options uh, is available to you. Um, but yeah, that is our very first uh, threat. Uh, we will take another another break now. Um, I'll pause our recording. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so uh, welcome back. And um, now that we've got the threat introduced, um, sort of spoke broadly about the the day phase. But um, essentially, as I said, the day phase is is yours to do what you wish. Um, primarily in terms of focusing on on resolving the threat itself. Um, the first thing you'll want to do um, is start finding out some clues by um, uh, following up on leads that you have, uh, looking into things. We'll get into the mechanics of how all that's done uh, in a moment, but that's kind of broadly speaking your, your initial thrust. Um, once we start getting more into play, there may be additional uh, additional things that you want to um, devote your time to, whether that's interacting with specific uh, NPCs, uh, going, to see, going and seeing different places, um, uh, having spending time with um, uh, the other hunters, um, or otherwise getting up to um, uh, all sorts of hijinks. But um, um, initially, um, uh, the 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 uh, uh, well, the other thing as well, just to, to be aware of, is um, that we will um, essentially um, a couple of things, I suppose, to the, the, the sort of looking at it longer term. Um, we will be um, introducing um, every every dawn phase, a new threat will be introduced um, until you have up to three active threats um, going on. So kind of there will always be other, other work coming in. Uh, you'll never have a, a dull moment, hopefully. Um, but that is um, kind of up to, um, uh, up to you to decide how you want to manage stuff, which bits you personally want to focus on. Um, all that sort of thing. Um, there may be consequences for ignoring uh, ignoring uh, individual threats and letting them get up to whatever they're getting up to, but uh, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, the other thing to be aware of um, in, in both the day and the night phase uh, equally 
um, particularly in in the day phase as well when you when you're sort of um, setting up scenes and stuff that you want to go to see or are requesting scenes you want to go and see um, you don't feel that you need to you know you do not need to all be going around as a group of hunters together uh, in fact often it can be more useful to split up and cover more ground particularly like i said once we get more uh, more threats coming in um and uh, there's more stuff to deal with um but by the same token if you do want to have scenes with another hunter because you want to kind of um, um bounce off of them a bit have some interaction with them that is also cool um but but just just be aware of that like this this isn't really a game that in which you um in which teamwork is like a an essential um an essential feature um you know splitting the party is not a bad thing always feel free to pursue what you are interested in pursuing um and if that involves the other characters that's also cool and obviously getting some good scenes with the characters interacting is is always great but um uh the um uh, that is um um you know you, you have the freedom to determine what it is you want to go up to. Um, with all that said and done, um, I'm going to um, ask, um, and I'll, I'll do it go through just in, in character keeper order, I think, for this one. Um, uh, uh, Zan, what, what do you think you would like to focus on um, uh, or start off doing um, in the... Um, uh, in this day phase? I think that Zan is going to be interested in um, maybe talking to some of the like potential witnesses on the on the docks on, on in Limehouse itself you know in like actually getting and and seeing what people might have seen because Sand wouldn't normally go out and do this kind of work, but something about the detail of the the bodies, something about the weird kind of way in which the bodies have been exsanguinated strikes a kind of chord, strikes a kind of note of recognition of something that Zan's been up to outside of Hargrave House. So Zan's going to get that, try and find an excuse to leave the office and maybe wander down to Limehouse and have a chat to the people there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. And um, Trixie, how about yourself? Um, what do you think uh, your, your uh, plans for the day are, or at least at this stage? Well, uh, the good news is that daytime is typically fairly safe when it comes to vampires. So I think that what I'll do is um, maybe uh, have a chat with uh, Jenny Johnston and see if I can't uh, extract a bit more information from her about the condition of the bodies, how she found them, if she herself has been preyed upon or another means harassed by this thing. Um, just get some info from her, perhaps. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, you 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 certainly know where she can be found. Um, uh, she um, runs uh, a premises uh, down in Limehouse, um, uh, which uh, which you can certainly find her at. Um, and uh, yeah, um, um, how about uh, Ardent? Um, uh, are you going? Uh, you, do, do you think you're also going to hit the streets, um, or do you have some more uh, um, esoteric plans? Uh, both, uh, kind of. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking, since I have one of my options for my, my ritual is observe another place or time. Uh, so I think uh, I'm going to seek out one of the, the places where, where one of the victims was found and uh, so preferably one that's a bit secluded uh, and uh, perform a ritual there basically to try to uh, see see what happened when they die yeah absolutely probably the well depending on 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 how you um on how you uh um rate it i guess um the probably the most secluded uh in general is the uh place where um uh, Charla, um uh, Char sorry, I'm losing her surname. Um, Charla Bell. Um, she was found in an alleyway. Um, it's kind of a bit out of sight. Um, the uh, 
one of the um one of the victims was found in the opium den that jenny um uh owns but um so it's it's sort of more secluded but at the same time there's also more likely to be people there if if that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, and i don't think i want to perform a ritual there until we're sure where she stands on things so i'll, I'll go for the alleyway perfect perfect okay so um uh all three of you will make your way down to to line house um uh perhaps uh um, in a uh, uh, in a handsome cab, um, Limehouse is um, a little ways uh, out of the um, out of the city proper, or at least the the city is very much expanding towards Limehouse these days. But it's um, it's a little down the river. Um, it's um, a warren of docklands. Um, it's clearly um, uh, particularly to um, uh, you know, it's 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 a you know a um, a, a very um, working class um, uh, area, um, particularly high number of um, uh, immigrants uh, in this area as well, um, primarily or or migrants perhaps might be a better word as well, um, but lots of sailors um, uh, from all around the world at least staying here if not settling here. Um, the streets are. As I said, you know, um, in, it's, it's, it's packed with 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 people um, uh, and trade goods and, and all sorts going backwards and forwards. Um, the you can smell the uh, the Thames uh, very strongly here as we were right down on the docks um, and underneath the general muck uh, of the Thames. There's that slight tang of salt as you're, you're sort of just in the still in the area that's slightly uh, brackish um, in the estuary. Um, as you all make your way, um, uh, make your way around, um, uh, we'll, we'll look first, I think, at, um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll visit uh, Jenny Johnston um, in the opium den. So, um, um, yeah, um, Trixie, as you um, as you enter the um, opium den, um, even though it is now um, daylight out, the um, opium den itself it's down in the basement um, under a um, under a boarding house. Um, it's dark down here. Um, it's smoky. It's got a heavy scent like ammonia down here. There are still, even though the morning has come around, there are still a few uh, people um, uh, conked out on, on various uh, pallets, um, or in some cases, slightly more uh, salubrious mattresses but um, and cushions. Um, the, um, as I said, the air is thick uh, with, with smoke. Um, so what we're going to do first here um, is we're going to do a quick paint the scene. So um, what, what this is, is essentially um, just a little prompt, a little question that I'll ask uh, each one of you, just to add a little bit more detail to the scene that we see um, before us. And, and it will be the same question for each one of you. Um, so um, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back around reverse again this time, I think. So um, uh, Anders, um, People from all walks of life uh, patronise um, Jenny Johnston's. Um, what do you see that indicates this? Hmm. Um, I think there are... I think there's kind of a... Um, uh, not quite a lost and found box, but there's uh, they they have a they, there's a collection of of uh, articles of clothing and the like that have been uh, left behind, forgotten by by patrons, and the, it's a very eclectic mix of of uh, various styles and fashions and and uh, 
uh, from different parts of the world and uh, um, and uh, different walks of life. Um, I think, I mean, they they will, uh, she will sell them or, or use them in some fashion, most of it, but I think she, she keeps some of them around, kind of like, like souvenirs or, or setting a mood or, or that sort of thing to, as a, to show how, how uh, uh, show the variety of, of, uh, of patrons, that sort of thing. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, and, um, uh, and yeah, David, uh, what, um, uh, what's another thing we see that, uh, that shows us that people from all walks of life uh, come here? I think that um, I'm trying to recall the name of the NPC, uh, Jenny. I, I think that Jenny herself is, despite hosting this in kind of a ramshackle, downtrodden docks part of the um, city, is herself adorned with many gifts that she has received from patrons. And a number of these are uh, quite ornate and expensive and not the kind of thing that you would expect to receive from some someone slumming it. Um, many of these must have come from people of some position in society. Awesome, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, um, Chloe, how about you? What's another uh, another thing uh, we, we see here that shows, shows the kind of disparity of the people that visit? There's different uh, tiers of service, quite apparent when you walk in. So um, different uh, bits of curtained off areas, which if you peek behind them look rather nicer than the sort of basic palettes that are just lying in the um, mold dripping wall in the in one part of the warehouse. So I think that there's um, tiered service, if you like, for the different levels of, cl of clientele that are coming through. Perfect, thank you. So yeah, um, um, so yeah, uh, Trixie, you uh, you enter, um, and yeah, um, you see um, uh, Jenny um, uh, sat behind um, a bar is 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 probably the best way of putting it, um, uh, and there probably are some drinks behind it, but um, that's not what most of the clientele come here for. Um, she is. Um, uh, she is. She's just got that kind of very um, calm, um, calm face. Um, that 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 air of someone who doesn't need to kind of um, um, exert force to to sort of um, get her way. She's very a very calming influence. Um, she um, is um, pretty, or, or clearly was pretty once. She's she's you know older now um probably in her um probably past her 40s um at this stage um um but um you know still still has 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 her looks even if they're kind of not quite what they may once have been um and wears like a very dark uh taffeta gown um and yeah as I said has numerous um uh jewelry um that she is wearing um as uh, as gifts um that she received um she is also um uh she she seems to be of of um, chinese descent as well um and um she will look up um as as you come in trixie and say ah um welcome um are you here to partake um i can have um i can have a uh, um, a pipe prepared for you, if you would like. Oh, I appreciate the offer, Jenny, but no, it's too early in the day for me. Not too early in the day for a drink, however, if you wouldn't mind uh, passing me a uh, bit of gin and I'll take a seat at the bar. She will smile and say, of course, um, and pour you the drink and uh, uh, set it up for you. I'll take a sip off it fine establishment you have here, Jenny. Uh, my name is Trixie. I'm uh, here representing 
Hargrave House. I believe you've been requesting our services. Of course. I um I have not realized that your um that uh, you would send someone quite so uh striking in appearance. Um she will smile um and kind of uh, uh, nod her head at you. Um um it's been most uh, most terrible. Um I will not say that this is a place that is entirely unused to people meeting violent, end, violent ends, but nothing normally like this. I'll smile knowingly when she makes reference to my appearance and say, well, in my experience, it takes an outsider to find an outsider, Miss Jenny. Now, speaking of, I'd like to ask you a couple questions about these cadavers you've been finding littered about your establishment and the surrounding environs. How is it that you're the only one finding these things? Or do you know others who've been coming across these bodies? Others have found them, um, but they know to come to me. I take care of this part of the city, a uh, few else find uh, find the time to do so. I see. If you could, I'd like to know the uh, locations and names of some of these uh, people who have found the bodies, unless you're able to provide information yourself upon the condition. Namely, if you know anything about the, well, murderer. Other than it is something strange, no. Um, I have never seen seen a uh, a body that has lost so much blood and yet left so little in the place it was found. Um, and she will kind of. Um, stand from 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 her her um her stool and kind of beckon you to follow um to follow her um and she will take you back um to um one corner um of the um of the den of the opium den where um um it's it's a dark corner and this is definitely in the in the less salubrious part of the um of the the, the thing um and she will say, this is where poor Jimmy was found. Um, at first, his body was so still, so seemingly unblemished that we thought a, he might have succumbed to the, uh, um, to, um, uh, a, an overdose. Um, we are usually careful, of course, to avoid such things, but one cannot always predict how someone will take to the pipe. He, we found him here. I have certainly cleaned the place since, but uh, she, she will um, suggest it to the area. I think you can see that If he had lost all of his blood, spilled across the floor, it would still be a sight to see, even with my best of efforts. So the way I'm thinking about this, um, and this is me kind of thinking out of character. Yeah. Um, now, Trixie has seen some people dead because it was a targeted hit and it was done very efficiently, borderline professionally. And she has also seen some people who have been killed in a fit of um, rage or other passions. And it was, to put it frankly, a very sloppy job. And if we're looking at the overall question of, is this a young versus old vampire we're dealing with? I would make the working hypothesis that younger vampires are gonna be sloppy and unrefined. Older ones are much more likely to 
kind of know what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. So absolutely. looking at about a look at looking about the scene and or questioning Jenny about the condition of the scene when she found it, is there a way I might try to assess for a clue in that direction? Yeah, absolutely. So this we will go to the um, uh, to the investigation uh, move. Uh, sorry, the information move. Um, which um, this is when you search for a clue, conduct research or otherwise gather information. So from the sounds of it, this to me sounds like um, probably a role with reason um, at this stage. This is is kind of you trying to put two and two together um, and um, from, from what you've you've learned so far. Oh, excuse me. And I will actually, sorry, I haven't yet. Uh, I have put the link in the character keeper itself, but I will just put it in the chat now as well to our dice roller. Um, as well, if you just want to roll physical dice, um, that is also uh, that is also cool. Uh, no worries, Anders. Um, if if you need to, uh, if you need to 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 um, head off, that's that's fine. We we'll, we'll, we'll probably um, uh, yeah we won't we won't do much longer anyway. But yeah, by all means, um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Um, but yeah, um, so if you yeah if you'd like to roll. Um, uh, roll with two dice um and then yeah add your your reason okay now I, I don't think i've used this layout for um roll with me before oh. i i just clicked the d6 twice and now there are two on the yeah, board here that's cool okay so um, um you can you, you can if you want to you can you can sort of select them both and then and then hit the the um re-roll button down at the bottom um, oh, okay. or, or if you're happy to to to, to, to take them so that's fine but no that's fine yeah you if um uh, sure. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I selected them and they came up a three and a one. As far as I'm concerned, that's random number generation. So sure. I'm happy to, I'm happy to just take that and call it a miss. No worries. So, um, uh, I will, um, on the, um, so on the on the uh, information mover uh, uh, on a miss that is just a, a standard miss as in the PBTA thing. So it enables me to sort of react in some way. Um, and I think that um, as you are um, as you are looking um, around at this um, strange, uh, as looking at this um, uh, the, the scene of the uh, the crime, as it were, um, you will. Um, you'll be be looking at this, and there will be a um, the sound of a, um, a soft footstep behind you, um, and the, the you know this 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 takes you by surprise. You're 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 usually more alert than this, but there is a figure um, standing behind you um, wearing a long um, sort of kaftan type um, outfit almost. Um, and they have a um, a sun mask covering most of their face, very elaborate. Um, they're carrying a long pipe um, in their hand. Um, and they will say, well, well, a very strange creature we have come in here. I have not seen the likes of you around here before. How very entertaining. Um, and if you would like to um, um, I'll, I'll also ask you to take a condition in a second. I will also though at this point mention that we there is uh, a mechanic um, we have called, uh, which again, if you know Brentwood Bay, you'll be familiar with this by a different name, um, the uh, the Janus mask. Um, if you wish, you may um, uh, you may mark um, a uh, one of your masks uh, that you'll see in your character sheet. You have the option of either marking a mask of the past. Um, if you do so, you have to mark those in order, and you will at some point have to tell us a little flashback about um, a previous scene. Um, or you can mark a mask of the future. Um, these you can mark in any order, but each one of them has its own kind of complication or cost to it. 
Um, if you do choose to mark one of these masks, um, that will upgrade the um, upgrade the success. Uh, sorry, upgrade the result of the roll by one tier. So you'll go from having a miss to having a partial success. Um, you can go from a success to a, a um, a partial success to a success or from a, a success a 10 plus up to a 12 plus which for some moves gives additional benefits um would you like to mark one of those masks um or do you want to leave the role stand as it is I'm, I'm just gonna let this one let this one ride and see what happens okay so um you can take the condition um um uh Uh, center of attention, I think, is probably the, the what, what we'll go for there. Um, cool, and um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll probably leave the full results of that for for, for our next time. Um, I think I don't want to cover too much ground um, while the others aren't here. Um, I'm just going to check in um, with um, Zan. Um, do, do you want to continue um, with with um, starting off with your scene now, or, or would you like to to kind of leave it there? Um, I'm happy either way, which, whichever you'd rather. We could, we, could um, we should just like say what Zan's doing and then pick it up maybe next week before we do. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, the thing cool. is, but Zan is will follow. Will have followed. Um, Trixie in like, I guess they've gone together but left Trixie to talk to Jenny at the bar and he's sort of um, walking with purpose as though they're meant to be there and it's perfectly fine through the um, through the through the um, the den and the concern that I have as Dan is that I'm going to know someone here and that is both a concern because I don't want to be recognised um, but also it's a potential opportunity that if I can connect with someone from my other life who's been hanging around here, they might be able to give us some information about what they've seen, about what's going on. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to basically look for anyone I might recognise who uh, I can pull to one side and say, what's been going on here? Have you had it? Have you kind of got anything to do with this or is it something else entirely? Yeah, uh, awesome. So um, I'm just trying to think how, how the best way of handling that would be. Um, I think um, um, I think that given your um, uh, given your your uh, your society that you have joined, I think you will absolutely be able to find um, someone here. Um, who certainly um, uh, looks the part, as it were. Um, uh, you know, you you, you will um, buy a tattoo on their neck or something as they're laying on the pallet or something like that. Maybe yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, I think that there is a um, yeah, there is a um, a young um, uh, well. Not, not not a young lord, but a a, a young son of a lord, um, yeah. uh, re reclining um, on one of the more uh, um, upmarket divans. Um, uh, they are um, uh, they are they um, uh, smoking um, smoking a pipe. Um, there is a um, um, a young. Uh, um, a young lady is is kind of um, uh, massaging their shoulders, um, um, and um, uh, yeah, you you just get the the glimpse of um, of yeah of a of a tattoo um, uh, from from within there, um, you know, around there, yeah, just pe peeking up from their their shirt, which is kind of you know half open. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, well, we could pick it up next week, then that interaction, if you like, when everyone's here. But it's nice to know there's a little hook to get us back yeah, into no, it. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, with that. We will, thank you. We will leave the session there and uh, look forward to, uh, to yeah. picking up next time.